What's up guys? I hope you're well. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the importance of getting comfortable with failing. And this is in every area of your life. Anything that you are looking to try and achieve, you need to get really comfortable with the idea of failing again and again and again. And I believe that this is the main reason for a lot of people why they don't go after their dreams, why they don't go after their goals. Because the big thing that stops most of us from doing the things that we really want to do in life is fear. And the biggest fear that we tend to have is that we're not going to succeed at whatever it is that we try. And if we're not going to succeed, then it's like, well, then why bother? Like take for example, I will, I'd like to use myself as an example because I think all we're doing when we're on these channels like this is we're just able to talk from our personal life experience. I'm making videos for this channel and it takes up a significant portion of my time, my energy and my day. And at the moment, it's not paying me. I'm not earning from anything from it, but I have this dream of what I want it to be. And if I was afraid that it wasn't going to happen, if I had the fear that there was no chance that I could be successful with it, then it would be very reasonable for me to turn around and say, well, why spend the time on it? Why spend the time on something that might not bear fruit, might not bring success? Okay. And that's very understandable, but it's really important because actually all the failures that you have whether directly related to what you're doing or not, they're how you get to success. They're how you get to your final destination. But it's not until all of this has happened and you can look back in it in reflection that you notice any of this. So it's important to have that in your mind before you go into things. I'll give you another example. Uh, I'm a martial artist. I'm a kickboxer. And I've done traditional karate as well. These are striking martial arts. Recently, I've got really into jujitsu. Jujitsu is a grappling martial art. The, it's a huge difference. So although I'm a black belt in martial arts, this is a very different world, very different universe. So I am now in this universe, very much so, a white belt. I know virtually nothing. And my inherent athleticism or training or understanding of how to learn new things is all well and good and it's helpful and it's useful but the reality of it is is I've now gone back to a stage where I'm making loads of mistakes I am wrong more often than I'm right I'm doing it wrong more often than I'm getting it right and it's very easy to get angry at yourself hold yourself to a high standard, you expect things of yourself, uh, and I'm guilty of this, the same as we all are, and you, you build frustration, you get upset, you're like, well, why can't I do this, this is stupid, uh, it's not me, you're a bad teacher, we, you know, we all go through it. The reality of it is, is you're just, you're at that stage, you're at the beginning, and at the beginning, you're going to fail, you're going to mess up, you're going to get it wrong. And it's going to happen again and again and again. But slowly over time, you're going to learn from your failures. And you are. You're going to do it enough times that you're going to realize that something has to change. And failing is absolutely fine. And you should, you should go for failure. You should look for things that you are going to fail at. Because that's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to develop. That's outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, my comfort zone is kicking and punching. There's not a lot anyone can show me in that realm that I won't have some or, you know, a keen understanding of. It's very easy for me to pick that stuff up because I've been doing it for years. But trying to figure out how to approach an arm bar or a choke, that stuff now is very new to me and I really don't know what I'm doing. And I'm fumbling and I look like, you know, I look like a kid who doesn't know how to walk. It's, you know, it's embarrassing. I'm getting choked out. I'm getting arm barred by children, by people younger than me, by people who, if it was in a different situation, I would be inherently the, 
the dominant figure, the alpha figure, if you understand. But I am in a beta situation. I'm in a placement of being below them in both ranking, but also in knowledge and in my ability to apply. And this is another trap that we fall into with this is some of us understand that there is a road of failures before you reach the success. But then we start finding excuses for why we can't go down that road. Excuses like, I'm too old. It's too late. I don't have time. I don't have the money. I don't have the energy. Yeah, all these different things. And really what we're doing is we're putting excuses out there so that we don't need to walk down the road of constant failure before we get to success. Yeah, you want to start your own business, but you've already got a job. Well, I need to go to work. I need to feed my family. I've got certain responsibilities. I can't now drop all of that to go start a business. And the reason you say that is because you you know, you understand that starting your own business isn't going to be, okay, well, today I'm earning 30,000 at this job and tomorrow I'll earn 30,000 working for myself. Doesn't work like that. You're going to start from zero again. You're back to being the white belt. And you have to go through that whole journey once more. So when we're talking about it, like I, I want to try and give you guys practical advice as well as something to think about. Because all of this is just, we're just, you know, what I call mind wanking. We're just thinking about it. We're, and it's good too. It's important. That's how you, uh, you know, that's how you develop a thought process for stuff. But we need to start finding solutions. The big thing is that you need to get your ego in check. You need to come to terms with it. And you need to lay out yourself a time frame. So yes, we can't just fail forever. Okay, because we don't have forever. We've only got so many years to do things. But you should set yourself a very clear goal. For example, the business. Okay, I'm going to work on it for five years. And it doesn't mean you quit your job necessarily. We can talk about that in another video. But you're going to find an hour a day. Find 30 minutes a day. And for five years, you're going to chip away at it. And see how far you can get down that road. For me, for example, I've set myself the goal of black belt in 10 years. So by the time I'm 40, I want to have achieved my black belt in jiu-jitsu. And what it does is it actually takes a lot of the pressure off. I now have three years at the start of this to just be rubbish, to just fail every single day. Uh, As long as I'm trying, as long as I'm involved, as long as I'm doing it, then I'm on the right path. It's not about succeeding every single day, but it is about showing up every single day. It's about developing the ability to be consistent regardless of what the results are necessarily saying. Because the results are not always going to be there, especially at the start. There's, we were talking about this on my uh, Short Combos podcast, if you get a chance, look for that one. The idea of this man digging through a tunnel to find gold, and we're seeing it from the outside, and he's just stopped, he's given up, and just behind this bit of wall is the gold that he was looking for. But he didn't know. He doesn't know how close he was to success. He had failed. Every time he chipped away at that wall and got to a new part of the cave, there was nothing there. Failure, failure after failure. And if he just chipped away one more time, on the other side of that would have been what he was after. And we don't know that. The analogy I used was a clay maker. And he has to, he has to first warm up the clay before he can shape it into a beautiful vase or bowl or whatever you want to create, the first thing he has to do is he has to make it malleable. He has to make that material work for him. So he spins it in his hands and on the on the table to get it warm so that it's then responsive. And he doesn't know when it's going to turn, but he'll know when it happens. And if he stops, if he gets tired, if he gives up on it, it goes cold again. It goes hard instantly. And you don't know how close you are to that success. And this is the important thing to understand with failure. You don't know how many failures you're going to have 
before you succeed. A baby doesn't know how many times they're going to fall before they can stand up on their own two feet and walk. They don't know, but they just keep trying. And one day, eventually, they're up on their feet. You've never heard of a baby that just said, nope, you know what, this walking isn't for me. And they grow up to be a full grown adult who just crawls all the time. Not because they're disabled, not because they have, you know, something wrong with their legs. They just gave up. They decided they weren't going to fail at trying to walk anymore. But our egos get in the way as grown-ups, as adults. This part of us that says that we should be at certain stages of our life at certain ages. And it, it puts glass walls and barriers up for even attempting it, for even trying. Because we don't want to look silly. We don't want to look stupid. We don't want to experience the feeling of failure, of letting people down, of letting ourselves down. So we just don't do it at all. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, nothing lost. Yeah? The problem is, is then we're filled with what ifs and regrets and wishing and hoping that we had done more with our life and with our time. So start small, try and find things that you can have little successes with and experience small failures that maybe only you see and that you learn to laugh at your failures. Learn to find it funny that you're a 30 year old man getting submitted by teenagers. You know, learn to laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously early in the process. Because you're like the baby trying to walk. No one, no one laughs at the baby falling over on the floor. I mean, we might laugh because it's cute and funny. <clears throat> but no one's judging it. No one's looking at a baby and going, God, what's wrong with you? Why can't you walk? It's a baby. Some learn it quicker than others. Some learn it later than others. But they all eventually get it, right? And it's the same. You have to, you have to make yourself like the baby. You just have to keep trying. And the baby doesn't get frustrated. The baby doesn't get stressed out because it can't do it. Okay? It might cry because it falls on its butt. But then it just stops crying and tries again five minutes later. And it's the same. So whatever you're trying to achieve, get comfortable with failing. Understand that it is completely an essential part of the process. There's no bypassing it. There's no skipping it. There's no avoiding it. It needs to happen. You have to fail multiple times in order to succeed. And the quicker you get comfortable with that idea, with that concept that failure is attached to success, the quicker you can get past it and get on the path. And then, then this is important. It's always there. Because if you're constantly trying to develop yourself, if you're constantly trying to be better, to be more, then you're going to fail all the way through life. But in between, when you look at the big picture, when you step back, when you get perspective, you're going to see these moments of success, which would not be possible without the string of failures behind them. And as always, take care of yourself.